This podcast is brought to you by LMU Munich. Thank you. All right, we have another great talk coming up right now, and um, it's taken by Robert Stein. He's a Python developer, and the topic is Google AMP for Django. Let's make him welcome. So, hello, everyone. Thanks for coming to my talk. I know Lasse is a really good speaker, so I really appreciate that you spend your time with me. Um, so first, let me introduce myself. I'm Robert. I'm a software engineer at Blueshoe, a co-founder with Michael, who you've probably heard of. Um, we're doing individual software development. As he told you, we have some e-commerce projects. We got some websites. We do integration works. And a lot of our projects are based on Django and Python. But we also do open source. So check out our repo. Um, as Michael told you before, maybe you've heard, um, we are involved a lot into Django CMS. We're restoring the reversion feature. We got some nice layouting plug in there to um, play around with the site. So um, check that out. And if you like to contribute, feel free. So as developers, we have a big responsibility in terms of giving the users a good experience when they, when they use our products or the products of our clients. And um, one big thing when it comes to user experience is page speed, the page speed of websites. I mean, everybody knows that like, when you got this loading animation and you wait and you wait and like, it takes ages for the page to appear. And Sometimes the content is even like really bad and you feel like you lost a minute of your lifetime for nothing. So um, it's like this is not only an issue for us, it's like across the whole industry. And uh, if you look at uh, the bounce rates when we got like really big loading times, it's, not, it's a bit hard to read. But well, like in the first three seconds, we got like an increase in the bounce rate of our visitors about 32%, and it increases like every every th three seconds. I think this should be actually this is a five, six, and this should be a ten. This is a mistake in my slides. Sorry, um, and it just rises, and we we lose visitors, which is really like a bad thing, especially when your product depends on the website you actually build. And this is actually true for almost all industries uh, in Germany. Like, if you see this uh, dotted line there, this is, should be the best practice. So your page speed should be, or your page should load basically under three seconds. And this is not true for any industry actually in Germany. Like, in average, of course, uh, they're all like double as, um, they take double the time to load which makes me sad, actually, because, I mean, there are ways to make your website fast. We all know them. You can use gzip, you can minify all your scripts, your style sheets, you can compress them, you can use caching, like Vagrin or whatever. And um, there are other ways you can speed up your page. And you can use AMP. So who of you has heard of the AMP project before? There are quite a few. That's cool. Um, who of you has used it before? That's just one? <laughs> OK. So let me tell you some things about it. So AMP is uh, abbreviation for Accelerated Mobile Pages. It's an open source initiative, basically led by Google. They, had a, they have a team which mostly develops it. Um, it was launched about two years ago, in August 2015. And since then, uh, they have a pretty wide adoption among publishers, which means the Washington Post or Wire.com, bloggers. Um, and that is because they actually developed the whole project together with the publishers. Um, they wanted to start out easy. And publishers, they mostly have static pages, right? They have some text and maybe some images. If they're really fancy, they got like a carousel or something, but um, it's mostly static content, and that's pretty easy to, or there are easy ways to um, improve the page speed for that. 
Now they're extending their focus to e-commerce so that they can also amplify dynamic websites. Um, but that's it. If you're interested in the project, check it out. They got a really good documentation. They got a YouTube channel. Um, they explain things really good. So I would like to give you a brief, o brief overview of what AMP actually technically is. So it consists out of three components. And the first one is the AMP HTML. We got the AMP runtime, which is a JavaScript file. And we got the AMP cache. So the AMP HTML, it's a superset and a subset of HTML, which basically means we have some tags which are replaced. For example, the image tag or the video tag with the AMP image tag and the AMP video tag. And we got some tags which are prohibited, like object, embed, and script. And like when I read that first, I thought, that sucks. I can't use JavaScript. Like I can't include external scripts and I cannot like write inline JavaScript. But um, they have some ways to include components which are approved by the M community so that you still can have something like tabs or cyber navigation and that stuff. You cannot include um, style sheets externally. You have to write your CSS inline. And I was like, that's really ugly. I mean, who wants to do that? It's really like you lose the overview in your project and yeah. At first, it didn't seem to make much sense, but they are, it's all about making the page as small as possible and having a controlled rendering time and um, a controlled layouting of the page. So there is some required markup for the AMP HTML, which basically is you add like the, an AMP attribute to your HTML tag. You set your character set to UDF8, which you should do anyway, I think. Um, you at the runtime, um, you got some mandatory styling, which makes um, the AMP pages like appear faster because they have this, like, this flashy effect through that. Um, and you add a canonical to your original non-AMP content. So that's basically the required markup that you, that you have to include. You have the AMP JavaScript. Um, which does a validation of your AMP HTML. So if there's a mistake, it won't validate and you can't use it actually. You, um, it is rendering your page. It is pre-rendering your, your page. So what you basically have to do is all your elements have a set width or height. Um, for example, the AMP image. So the JavaScript can pre-calculate the page's layout and um, so you, have, you don't have these jumps when the images are loaded uh, later. It prioritizes all the above the fold content, which means what the user sees first is loaded first, rendered first. Um, it manages the resource loading, so the, all the resources are loaded in the right order, um, the way they actually are used. Um, and it has a built-in validator, so you just append hashtag, one, hashtag development equals one to your URL and it shows you all the mistakes you made or your page validates uh, in the best case. And last but not least, we have the AMP cache. Um, it validates your AMP documents again because they don't want to fetch invalid AMP documents, of course. And um, they commit to be a reliable, fast um, delivery content, net content delivery network. Um, and I mean, the, like the most known AMP cache is probably the one that Google offers. Um, but there are other ways. Um, Cloudflare, they have a technology which is called AMP% where you can set up your own AMP cache so you don't lose actually the traffic of your domain. Because when Google shows AMP pages in the search engine results, there's this little thunderbolt. Maybe you've seen it in the search engine results. Um, they actually open an iframe which was rendered before, and uh, that's why it's so fast. But you don't leave the Google domain, so you could say you lose some traffic. 
but they got ways to attribute the traffic back to your page and uh, attribute clicks on ads and that stuff. So you don't lose anything about that. But if it's important for you to keep the people, uh, the user on your domain, um, you can use M% for that. It also does some optimizations to the HTML and it uh, got some resizing for the images. They remove all the EXIF data. But now let me show you um, a quick demo on how AMP actually works and how you can use it with Django. So I got three examples prepared for you. This is, um, uh, sorry, this is a really basic HTML page. Just close this. Um, which uses the compress package, which is really nice because you can compress all your JavaScript and all your style sheets into one file, minify it, uh, shove it into pre-compilers or whatever. Um, and basically you get like a minifi minified version of your script or styles out of that, which is really nice. Um, there's not much special about it. We use Bootstrap for some theming. We have an include, which just includes a headline. Um, and it's yeah, pretty much a basic basic site, we have this space list to remove all the white spaces. And if we look at it, this is how the page looks. So I think you don't see the panel very well, but the headline is blue, we got the logo. It's basically a normal HTML page. So if we look at it, there's really nothing, nothing special about it. We see this is the compressed file. Um, which now includes our bootstrap and the basic um, styling I added, which is really, really simple, just like this, the color for the headline, and we got an unused CSS rule, which of course is uh, included in the minified version. So now we want to change this normal website, web page, to an M page on a manual way. So we go to this, um, and I prepared it already. So I added the required markup to see the M attribute and the HTML. I added the UDF8 character set. I think it was there before, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, the M runtime, got the viewport now, and the canonical, which is static for now. Um, I added this inline keyword to, to the compress statement to make all the style styles in line, because we need to do that with AMP. Um, and there is this mandatory styling here. Um, we got the include, and we changed the image to an AMP image. So let's have a look on how that looks in the browser. You just have to believe me what, uh, concerning the, the resources I use here. Um, yeah, it seems to work. The image is rendered because it wouldn't be rendered if it's like just the AMP image tag. So let's have a look on how that changed here. So there are some new things which are included by the AMP runtime. Um, we got this style here. And we got the custom, custom style. We see there's our bootstrap here, minified together with our main JavaScript, uh, main CSS, sorry. And the runtime put the actual image into the AMP image container. So as we see over here, it seems like an error occurred. And what happened? Of course, Bootstrap is way too big in its CSS to be included because we have this limitation of 50 kilobytes for our style sheets. Um, which pretty much it sucks for your project because you have now t you have to tear apart your styles and um, make like an extra version for your M page. So I didn't like that, and um, we started a project which is called Django M Tools, um, and I want to show you the version here. We use the Django M Tools. We load the M tags. There, and if you compare it to the version before, nothing much has changed except the font size in my editor. And um, 
Well, it's, I think it's pretty neat because we, um, what we did is we inherited some classes from the Compress project and uh, changed it a bit so that we only include the applicable CSS for the document. And um, what we also did is we are parsing the um, document through the Amplify tag there and include all the need needed and required markup into our head section. And what we do is we convert all the images to AMP images. So you don't have to take care of that and write an include for your images or whatever. And let's see how that looks actually in the browser. So I prepared this here for you. No, no. Sorry. Seems like a server. Uh, actually, the demo doesn't need internet, so <laughs> at least it didn't. It did work when I sat there. Sorry. That's the thing. Uh, that's the thing with uh, live demos. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, the CDN it uh, doesn't work because because the amp, amp uh, runtime is gone. So I think it was cached for some time in my browser, and now I don't have uh, internet. So. Whatever, let's, uh, let's say um, the, the documented validates. Uh, it completely works and um, basically um, what we do, I go back to the demo, sorry about that, I didn't think of that. Um, what we basically have in the AMP tools is we have a middleware which determines if the current request is an AMP request because your AMP pages need to have a separate URL from the normal content if you say so, and um, we set the canonical URL there in the, in the middleware to the actual content, to the normal content, and we add um, the inline styles in the response middleware of Django. Um, the, as I told you, the Amplify template tag, it um, inserts all the required markup into the header section, and um, where does that whole thing actually happen in the Django request response cycle. So in the request middleware, we determine if this is an AMP request. This could be through site ID or um, through the domain you're on or whatever. And um, we determine like what's the, what's the canonical of this request actually, so the non-AMP version. Um, if it's an AMP request, we add all the required markup, we convert the image tag, and um, we insert the canonicals and in the response middleware when we have like the template which was completely rendered um, we insert the only the applicable CSS. So how does that work? We have um, some less files, we have some CSS files which we put into the compressor, shove it through the preprocessor so that we get only an main CSS or whatever how you call it um, out of it which is completely minified, but still includes all the bootstrap and all the rules you actually don't need. Um, and then in the response middleware, when we have like the whole template actually rendered with all its includes and so on and so forth, we put the template, the rendered template string into Purify CSS with the minified um, stylings and get out only the applied CSS rules. So um, then we insert them into the template and we got like really a really, really short um, style string actually in our head section. There are still some problems which aren't solved yet. Um, I think like the biggest problem is that AMP is component based. So not every component in AMP has an equivalent in HTML, in the HTML markup. So let's say if you use the AMP sidebar, um, it may look completely different in the normal HTML and we have to find a way to give the developers a way to translate that. 
Um, currently, the important uh, keyword is just kicked from the CSS because it's prohibited. And I think we, sh like, we want to get rid of the dependency of purif Purify CSS. And um, I think we could do some clever resorting there to minimize the impact of just kicking the um, important statement. And we need to stabilize the parsing. It's really basic how it works now. The project is really, really young, so don't use it in production. Um, but feel free to contribute. I think it's really cool and it's a really like, easy way to adapt, for example, the pages of your blog to the, to the M format. Um, and that's actually all. If you liked, um, yeah, check out our project. If you don't know Django, check out Django. It's really great. I think most of you know it. But still, for, for the ladies, if you don't know Django, check out the Django Girls Workshop in Munich. It's a great opportunity to get started with it. And if you have questions, uh, now's the time for that. Yeah, thank you, Robert. We can take questions now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think an important fact is when your page is indexed by Google or you have like a larger scale, maybe something like a small social network or something, use your own M cache, you can pre-render the content and you have this instant experience which you won't achieve with just a stripped down version. Okay. Um, you do have your, your um, regular desktop page, you have the mobile page, mm -hmm. and then you potentially already render those in different, different ways. Yes. So for example, the response design is not just trying to make it fine. It's in the response design wouldn't be enough, for example. Okay. Where, okay, what prevents you? So the question is. Okay, so the question is if you already have two different templates for your mobile and your desktop version, why shouldn't you do a third one? So um, I think you should say dry. So if you write all your template code again for almost the same purpose. I mean, if you have like an adaptive, adaptive version of your page, you could totally do an AMP version, but you have to do something like, you have to write includes for images because there's no, I mean, you could do all your templates already with an AMP image tag inserted, but you have to write everything like in a new way. And I think it's a nice thing to just wrap it into this template tag and use just the mobile version of your of your page. Is, is that okay? <laughs> okay, thanks. Any other questions? So any further questions? All right, thank you very much, Robert, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.